What do you call somebody with no body and no nose? Nobody knows. <laughs> What up, YouTube? Scott here. Thanks again for visiting the channel. As always, I appreciate it. If this is your first time to the channel, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that thumbs up button just for the algorithm. And if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Still trying to kick out some of this COVID shit. Uh, but today is a very exciting day. Uh, I'm doing the review on uh, the... Custom Knife Factory Rotten Evo 3.0 uh, that I got months ago from my buddy Pete. Uh, just, you know, through all the stuff that's happened over the last couple of months, I, I haven't been up to reviewing this knife, but I absolutely know and love it inside and out. This thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some gloves. Um, just because I don't want to mark this thing up too much, I just want to be able to show you the whole thing in detail uh, before I get my slobbery, dirty fingerprints all over it, which is gross. Uh, so, again, the Rotten, sorry, Custom Knife Factory, Custom Knife Factory, Rotten Evo 3.0. Uh, and just look at this polished DLC coating on this thing. It's just sick. I mean, absolutely amazing. I absolutely love this knife. Uh, so like I said, we're going to get you some close-ups here. Try not to make it too dark. Uh, so that's the show side scale, obviously. Uh, and you've got that beautiful grind on that blade. Uh, nice opening hole. That's what she said. Uh, lots of jimping. And just look at how brilliant this this polish is on this jimping i don't know <laughs> i don't know how they did this but it's just it's disgusting how nice this knife i mean look at that jesus titty fucking christ um sorry guys so you've got the backspacer here which again is absolutely gorgeous just so beautiful so so beautiful you've got the jimping up here uh on the spine of the handle again absolutely gorgeous just i mean you can see the bearings in there uh this thing is put together so well it's it's such a, a just a strong beefy knife uh i i don't know how it performs because i'm not going to risk using this thing on anything uh i mean other than maybe maybe tape someday but i doubt it um and there oh the piece there is a stance the Moki Tai Pocket Clip. Oh, that's so sexy. So sexy. I, I <laughs> Look at that. Look at it. Oh, God, it's so gorgeous. Just all those colors, the purples, the blues, the oranges, the green. Oh, this. And there's like, like there's like a light blue in there a little bit. You can see that in the crevices and the. Those little thin spots. This just, is just, just, just the most beautiful knife I've ever seen in my life. I know I'm I'm just milking the shit out of this, guys. I apologize. But I, I can't describe to you uh, how much I love this knife. But we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, I'll show you the blade before I get all fingerprinty with it. Look at those grind lines. Look at those grind lines. Oh, just... And this blade. Oh, my God. Uh, it's going to be a long video. Sorry, guys. I just, I, 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 I don't have the words uh, to describe the way that I feel about this knife. Just those grind lines are absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, this big uh, oversized opening hole, that's really fantastic. I really love the oversized finger troll on this guy. Uh, I mean, look at that. I mean, my finger takes up maybe three quarters of that. And it's, uh, oh, it's just so nice. Uh, serial number 554, M390 blade steel. Um, but we're going to, first we're going to do the size comparisons. Don't worry, I'm not going to go too far off the rails. I just wanted to be able to show you this guy without any fingerprints all over it. So now I can get it all gucked up. <clears throat> Okie dokie, clean hands. Uh, all right, so we're going to compare this first things first to the... I'm going to give you the measurements first. Uh... <laughs> All right, overall length, 8.5 inches overall. Uh, I already said that. Blade length is 
four inches with a 3.5 inch cutting edge. And we're looking at a handle of 4.75 inches here. Okay, now we can do the size comparisons. Uh, I'm gonna have a hard time fitting all this in the frame, uh, but I will do the absolute best that I can. Uh, let's pull this over here a little bit, and then we're gonna pull this back a little so those are lined up. So you can see that the Evo 3.0 is just a hair longer than the Rat Model 1. The Rat Model 2, Jesus. Um, we're gonna line those up as well. Obviously gonna be quite a bit smaller uh, than the Evo 3.0. The Demco knives. The Demco knives. Uh, so the 8020S, if I can learn how to talk. Uh, so this guy's gonna be just a hair shorter than the, uh, the Evo 3.0 as well. And the 20.5 obviously is going to be quite a bit smaller than the Evo 3.0. Last but certainly not least is the Spyderco knives. Love Spyderco knives. Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I'm guessing this is going to be a hair shorter as well. There you go. And we've got the pair 3. Obviously going to be quite a bit smaller than the 3.0. Uh, so you can see that there. Let's get these guys closed for the carry profile. And now my fingerprints are going to get all over it, which drives me absolutely crazy, but it's okay. It's worth it. It's definitely worth it. All right, so you can see when they're closed, the uh, paramilitary 2 is just about the same length. Uh, and then let's check the height on this guy. Highest part of the blade looks like right here. So... It looks like the Evo 3.0 is not quite as tall, maybe, eh, maybe just about the same the same height as the 3.0, or as the Para 3. I'm not sure which I was which way I was going with that one, uh, but uh, let's do the blade stock thickness because I do have that measured already, and I want to double check to make sure that these are crap uh, before I send them back, which I think they are. Um, okay, here we go. So this is supposed to be. A blade stock thickness of 190 thousandths. Oh, that's pretty damn close. Yeah, 187. It's off by about three, uh, which isn't terrible. Three, three tenths or three hundredths of a three thousandths of an inch is not a huge amount of uh, discrepancy, but I'm probably going to get another um, caliper just in case. Uh, let's check the weight on this guy. See if I can do it without squeaking the the scale again uh so we're zeroed out that's fantastic and we are looking at 6.3 ounces which is exactly what it's supposed to be which surprises me because of the mokitai pocket clip on there i mean i know they're both titanium uh but with the uh the other stuff mixed in there i figured it might make you know a little bit of a difference like a, like a tenth of an ounce or something like that but apparently it is spot on that's fantastic all right so Blade steel. Uh, we are looking at, I already told you that, it's M390, <clears throat> which is fantastic. Four inch blade with a uh, relatively deep hollow grind. And you can see those grind lines. I showed those to you earlier. They are absolutely spectacular. I love them. Uh, you've got a flat that carries out to about 70% the width or the length of the blade there. Uh, you've got this opening hole that I've already showed you a few times, and then you've got a swedge which comes down to about 90% the length of the blade. Uh, this is running on bearings, uh, and you've got the thumb studs here, which also work as the external stops and the, uh, I'm sorry, the stops for when the blade is open and the stops for when the blade is closed. As you can see, uh, the stops, the lugs right here, uh, bump up against the titanium to uh, create the external stop when it's opened. And then when it's closed, I'm sorry, there is a stop pin in there. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I know this knob inside now. Um, so, so you do have quite a large stop pin here. Um, and that just rests right in there in the finger joil. Uh, so we are looking at uh, full titanium scales here, which also have been milled. Uh, to kind of almost look like a wood grain. It's it's gorgeous. Uh, I keep saying gorgeous. Uh, and then obviously you've got the uh, the polished uh, DLC coating here. I've already showed you the jimping on the spine of the, the uh, scales, uh, and I've already showed you the jimping on the backspacer here. 
Um, I contacted uh, I Make Sick Shit. He's a guy on uh, Instagram that, that makes all kinds of stuff out of titanium and stuff like that. And I said, hey, do you think you might be able to make me a backspacer uh, out of Mokutai that would match the clip that I have on here? He's like, I would love to be able to do that for you. He's like, the problem is it's, it's, it's very difficult uh, getting... Uh, Mokitai in the thickness that uh, he would need in order to use it, you know, as to make a backspacer for this guy. It's very, very thick. Um, it's about the same uh, thickness as the blade, so about 190 thousandths. Uh, you've also got, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you've got an, a, a free spinning pivot here, which isn't awesome, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, they are putting a D-shaped pivot into the uh, Evo 4.0 um, which, you know, that's fine. Uh, I, I, I went and looked at it. I'm not going to buy it. It's too small. Well, it's not too small, but for, for me, for, to spend that much money on a knife, uh, it's, it's just too small for me. Um, but anyway, you've got a T20, uh, for your pivot here and the rest of the, uh, screws on this guy are T10s, uh, except for the steel lock bar insert, which is a T8. Um, the scales here are uh, generously milled out. I don't know if I can show that to you or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can see that in there. So you've got quite a bit of milling uh, on, on both of those scales, which is absolutely fantastic. Cuts down on the weight of the knife. Um, but I wouldn't care how heavy this knife was if it was full, you know, solid titanium all the way throughout. Uh, this is not the, a knife that I carry or use in any way, shape, form, or fashion. This is my only Save Queen that I own. Uh, every other knife that I that I own, I, I carry it, I use it, um, maybe only once a month, maybe once every three months, but I still do use them. This one, I absolutely will never, ever, ever use, and I'm not getting rid of it either, so don't ask. Um, not to be mean, I just, this is the coolest knife I've ever owned, for sure. It's expensive, it's stupid hard to get, uh, unless you get on the, um, the pre-order. Uh, and that's another thing I wanted to tell you guys when I was reading through the pre-order stuff for the Evo 4.0. Uh, they used to send these out to different retailers, uh, you know, the Overstock or whatever they had left after the pre-order was done. Uh, but they said they're not going to do that anymore. They're just going to be selling it through the pre-order and that's it. Uh, they're only going to make as many as they get orders for apparently, which that's fine. They can do whatever they want. And again, I'm not that interested in the Evo 4.0 anyway. Um, this was the one that I wanted. Uh, I got a, a chance to buy one, just the standard uh, version with the, um, I believe it was a stone wash blade, uh, and then you had gray scales here with a gray pocket clip, uh, and I was super excited about that. I was ready to buy it. I just didn't have the money right away, um, and then before I got the money, uh, my buddy Pete says, hey, I know you're looking for an Evo. I got this one here with DLC coating on it, the polished DLC, and it's also got a Mokutai pocket clip. And he offered it to me for pretty close to the same price I was going to get the standard for. So I absolutely could not turn that down. Um, <clears throat> so I think I've gone through everything as far as hardware and everything is concerned. Uh, now the, <laughs> the action on this guy. Sweet baby Jesus. Look at that. Tink. <laughs> I absolutely love this knife, guys. I can't tell you how much I love it. I, I these, My fingerprints are so disgusting on this thing. Uh, but uh, deployment. Check. Well, not that time. Deployment. Check. Reverse thumbs or reverse flick. You can also use the hole here for your thumb and thwack it out that way. Uh, or you can use the lugs here to use as thumb studs and deploy it that way if you want to. Uh, I, I don't remember if I've ever even tried to reverse flick this guy. Wow, yeah, that's pretty easy. That's not bad at all. I'm surprised because the lug is so close to the scale here. Um, but if I give it just a little bit of wrist, it flicks right out, which is perfect. Um, the detent's a little heavy for you to do the reverse flick, at least on mine. Uh, but there we go. Um, I don't think that's the end of the world with anything. Like I said, these lugs are very, very close to the frame, uh, making it very hard for me anyway, uh, to reverse flick it. Um, but just look at how shiny this thing is. Uh, like Metal Complex said, when, you, when they showed this to you on the website, they did not do it any justice. I mean, this thing is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, uh, so anyway, ergonomics, uh, ergonomics are a dream on this knife. Absolute dream. Whether you're choked up, uh, or whether you're using the standard hammer grip. Uh, either way, it's fantastic. I will say uh, I'm not a huge fan of uh, how my, my finger kind of rests right here on this this uh, uh, 
part that's shot up just a little bit. Um, if I go back just a little bit further, that's not a big deal. Um, but I don't want to be this far back on the knife if I'm going to use it, which I'm not. So <laughs> again, that's kind of moot. Uh, but I absolutely love holding this thing with the, the forward finger choil. Like I said, over it's an oversized forward finger choil. I've got at least a quarter of it left when I'm completely locked in. Um, and it's, it's just so, so comfortable. It fits right into your hand. Uh, you've got this swell here, just a little bit of a swell. Uh, and when you close your hand around this real, real tight, uh, it just makes it so, so comfortable. This thing is so comfortable to use. If I were to use this thing, I, I feel like it would be an absolute dream. Just pushing it through cardboard, uh, cutting through meat. I mean, it, it, this thing is, is it's an absolute uh, beast of a slicer, I'm sure. Obviously, I've cut paper with it, but that's it. I haven't done anything else with this guy. Okay, take a guess at how this knife makes me feel. Wait a minute, did I, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do I didn't do centering, I didn't do blade play, I didn't do any of that bullshit. Uh, okay, so I got the titanium, I got the pocket clip, blah, blah, blah. Titanium frame lock, I think I showed you that already. Wunderbar. And uh, the bearings uh, make this thing just fire out like a goddamn rocket. Uh, deployment is no problem whatsoever, whether you're using the reverse flick with the hole, or your thumb with the hole, or the thumb lugs, or thumb studs, whatever the hell you want to call them. Uh, deployment is absolutely no problem with this knife whatsoever. Disengagement, again, buttery smooth. Uh, you know, when you disengage it, there's no lock stick whatsoever. You can hear this thing just thwack open when those lugs hit the titanium. Uh, and that's another thing that surprised me. Like, as much as I play with this goddamn thing, there is absolutely no wear at all uh, on these... Um, these areas where the thumb lugs are. I'm sorry, there's a little bit of wear on this side, but this side looks really, really good. Uh, and that's mostly just light reflection that you're seeing there. There is a tiny bit of a mark there, but I don't. I might even be able to just wipe that off with a cloth. It might just come off of there. Um, <clears throat> the uh, like I said, the lock, there is no lock stick whatsoever on this guy. It comes off with no problem whatsoever. And then once you get it past the detent, it just it just glides right back down into the handle with no problem whatsoever. I wouldn't call it guillotine, but it's definitely drop shot for sure. Uh, you get it past the detent and you start moving the handle up a little bit and it just falls right back into there. And, and these acoustics on this friggin' thing, the acoustics, hold on. How can you not love that? Honestly. Okay. So the centering on this guy, dead nuts, perfectly centered, as you can see right there. And then again, uh, the way this DLC coating looks on the, t the tip of this blade, I mean, that almost looks like Damascus. That's fucking ridiculous. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, let's check blade play, blade play real quick. No blade play left, right, up, or down, which is not surprising at all. Uh, and let's check the balance. Should be right behind the pivot. We'll see. Might be a little butt heavy. Yeah, that's butt heavy for show, for show. Okay. I think I got it. Yep. Definitely butt heavy, but it's not terrible. It's not to the point where it's going to cause serious balance problems in your hand. But again, I'm not going to use this, so I don't really give a shit about the balance. <laughs> I'm just happy to have the goddamn knife. Um, so... How does this knife makes me make me feel? It makes me feel like I don't want to say when I got my first bicycle when I was a kid, but when I got my first really 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 nice bicycle when I was a kid, that feeling right there, we were like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm gonna pop. <laughs> That's how nice knife, this knife makes me feel. Uh, just <laughs> just an absolute dream. I mean, this thing is so amazing. Uh, I don't want, again, I don't want to say awesome because I'd just be saying awesome over and over and over and over again. Um, I cannot find anything wrong with this knife at all. Uh, not even the pocket clip. Uh, it's, it's a flat uh, pocket clip, so there's really no hot spot. I'm squeezing as hard as I possibly can. I can feel that the pocket clip is there, but there's no hot spot on this guy whatsoever. Um, again, the jimping on the spine of the blade, I'm pretty sure I showed you that, but I, I want to be sure, uh, not to leave anything out here. 
Uh, and again, and again, um, like I said, that the the way they did the finish on this blade, it it kind of looks like Damascus on the uh, the cut parts, which I know they didn't, you know, obviously they didn't etch this or anything like that, because it's all coated. But uh, it just it just looks amazing. Everything about this knife looks amazing. But if you can see now, I have my goddamn fingerprints all over it, and it looks like shit. Uh, so, but it's easy to clean off. You just get a wet rag and just wipe it off, and then dry it real quick, uh, and it, it works out fantastically. Um, little side note, um, <laughs> you know what? Never mind. I'll tell this uh, story on the live stream. It's not a big deal anyway. Uh, but I think that's it for tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please like, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that and stay up y'all. Take it easy. Bye.